Well, we, we, I mean, yeah, we, I'm glad I, I mean, we might do it, but I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, okay. I appreciate this is good. Good. stuff in the kitchen. No, oh, she email. She does. Does. So we have a chance to look this over This is so it. exciting. All right, you're live. What's going on? And you have, you have connections. You have power. I mean, you have friends up here. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Okay, I think we will call to order the meeting of the Washington Historic Preservation Commission for Monday, March 18th. Uh, if we'll have roll call, please. Carolyn Witt. Here. Steve Struberg. Here. Brian Bogue. Here. Rick Hopp. Here. Danielle Grotewheel. Jamie Holtmeyer. Here. Andrew Clary. Here. Bridget Kelch. Here. Joe Holtmeyer. Here. Mark Heidrich. Susan Waterman. Here. Sal Maniachi. Here. Tom Melvin. Okay, if you'd all like to join me in the pledge, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We you messed me up, dude. In liberty? He did. I did. <laughs> okay. I that star. I was believing it. Yeah, right. I think over here. I say the pledge to come more off. <laughs> a little red. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that wasn't me. I think my record for one oh, day was the pledge. Oh, it was Andrew. Oh, it was Okay. I'm just laughing. Yeah. Uh, do we, I hope everyone looked at the minutes. Mm -hmm. And if you have any corrections or questions, otherwise I'll, I'll take a motion. I motion. Second. Second. And a second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We have lots of new business. This is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're starting with Mr. Holtz and uh, the 320 Lafayette, and you have your contractor person there. I <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. It's always good to bring back up. If you'd like to come up and Introduce yourself and Steve, if you want to come and be supportive. You don't get to do that on that side very often. <laughs> come and be yeah. supportive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what a team. Okay, tell us about the project. Okay, so we are uh, moving our law firm from Union over to Washington. Um, I've been renting Craig Hellman's spot yes. down on uh, 3rd Street. Uh, we're going to have one big office over there. Um, basically, it was a... I'm sure you're all familiar with the, how the house was, but it was a four family. The staircase was on the outside. We've ripped that off. You can see that now. We're restoring the original staircase and making it into basically a two story. Uh, there'll be four main offices, a conference room, a kitchen, and, and two bathrooms. That's cool. So That's cool. I think it's going to turn out pretty cool. Yes. Well, and that shouldn't require a whole lot of parking because I don't know how many spots are actually in that. It comes with four. Four. Right. And then you're surrounded by parking lots, so mm -hmm. that's yeah. really helpful. <laughs> Almost on all sides. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, uh, well, are there any discussion from the Do you group? want to share with, about the materials you chose? Yeah, so we're going to go, um, we had thought about like whitewashing it and having that brick look, but there's so much stuff on top of that brick. There's, I think, a, a good layer of plaster on a lot of it. Okay. We power washed it last week. It's, it's, you can see it's it's been power washed, but it's it's you couldn't get back to that brick look. So we're going to keep it white. Uh, we're going to put the black uh, windows in. We chose Anderson 400 um, casements. Um, so very similar to that picture there, but there will be one more grid, so it'll be a four grid window. Um, they are wood windows. Uh, the 400 series has like a, a vinyl clad around the side though, but um, to kind of give it a little look, like a little pop, the, the sills are being replaced in every window. We're going to have a piece of cedar um, to kind of make the black and white pop a little bit. Great. That's great. Yeah, and the, the awning will probably be something flat like that because if you look at the building now, if you go back to the front, and you can't really see it there, but like the, the blue part of the front door, mm -hmm. that's all, um, that's not original brick. On the inside, you can see that the, the doorway used to be that whole blue part. So we're going to rip out all that blue part and put a nice big, probably a cedar door to match the cedar um, sills. And there'll be like a flat raised seam metal awning above it. Is there a third picture that you guys, was there another? There we go. There you okay. go. That's, That's <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, those are the kind of colors we're going with there. Like the cedar, okay. um, the, the door that, that was just up there. There's probably not enough room to do something like that. I think it would be too tight to try to get grids in those, in those right. side lights. Right. But there, there will be a side light and, and a um, transom above it. But it'll probably be custom done because it's not going to be a uniform. 
dwarf size. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds Play great. <laughs> Looks yeah. great. So just so everyone remembers, this was, as part of the bid for this process, this is a city uh, project that we sent out for proposals. Um, it's mandatory review, mandatory compliance. Mm -hmm. So the certificate of review for this will be based on what you see here. Um, obviously, like, if there's major changes, they'll have to come back. But I mean, if they come in and they say that we're getting a five pane window versus a four, that wouldn't trigger it. But anything mm -hmm. that's going to you know, be any substantial change to a building permit, they would come back to you all. So what this, about, this is your opportunity oh, to. Yeah, what about the roof Are you guys? Yeah, let's be replaced. Shingle roof. Shingle roof. Architect them. And those, those four new windows, that's where existing windows originally were. So you're just opening them up to get back to the original. They, first, they walled them up so they could add closets and bathrooms in those four rooms. Back when there's a fourplex in there, that's where the bathrooms and bedrooms and closets were. I'm glad to see you opened them up. Yeah, it's yes. going to look a lot better. Yes. And then the awning, so the awning that's there now, that's coming off, and that flat one you had in the, it'll be replaced. Yeah, because like, it, you can't really see it on there, but like the blue part of the brick that's coming out actually goes up higher than that awning. So you couldn't yeah. really, by the time you get the new door and the transom in, if you had a, a, an awning like that, it's, it would be touching that middle window. Right. Well, that's an ugly awning anyway. Well, and it was not, a, <laughs> I don't think, original. Yeah. Yeah. It, it got put on over the new yeah. brick. Are you going to have access from the back to the building as well? Yeah, you can actually see today, um, Steve cut the, there was a door there that got bricked up, um, but that was cut out today, so that was the original door to the back. Do you have an east facade? Good, because especially if you're parking, to be able to access yeah. from the back. We're going to put, um, there's going to be a sidewalk that goes from the uh, parking lot on the north side and then also on 4th Street that'll get to the back door and there'll be a 16 by 20 patio back there. Excellent. Like a nice Excellent. Iron fence around and landscape. Yeah, in the afternoon, you won't have sunlight, yeah. sunshine, <laughs> so that'll be perfect. Okay, now, now's our opportunity. If anyone has great. Yeah. interest, because they have to listen, and this doesn't happen very often. Yeah, well, I like I everything he's doing. Yeah, yeah. It really, it really looks good. Historically spot on, I think the awning looks great. My big question tonight was, are you gonna paint it or are you not? And you answered that, mm -hmm. so. Steve, the color of the roof that you're replacing it with, is it going to match the existing? Yeah, it'll be a black 30-year uh, architectural shingle. Sal, was there anything that you had any concerns with? No, not at all. I'll make a motion to issue the certificate of review. Do we have a second? Second. And we have a second. All those in favor to issue the certificate of review, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, and thank you, gentlemen, thank so you. much. Thank you. We are excited. You cannot know. How excited we, well, it may not look that way, but we are very excited. <laughs> <laughs> because we have been sweating that building for a long yeah. time. Yes. Years. Thank you. And, oh. and that is a really good use. Mm -hmm. Anybody yes. wants to come through anytime, see you, the front door open, come on in. You need to go in there. We will. We'll yeah. Take advantage I'd love to of that. see it now. Uh, pouch, tape measure, Snort. hammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hat. Water jug. Hat. And what did I say tape measure? Yeah, bring tape measure. <laughs> hey, hey, Steve, were you able to keep that? Hardwood floor that was almost like. Uh, actually, the whole thing's going to get overlaid throughout the whole thing, correct? Yeah. Oh, none of it was able to bring it back. It's, it's like, like how my house was. The original floors. There is no subfloor, so <clears throat> it's not very. It's not really strong enough to need to put another thing over it. It had been probably sanded a couple times already, yeah. and a lot of a lot of it was rotten from termites. So one room we had to take completely well, floor joists out and new floor joists. And so. And uh, what's better your to do the whole thing all over again? Projected move-in date. It says July. No. <laughs> oh, it's June. Oh, June. I'll go with June. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm telling everybody June, so it'll probably be July. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. That's good. Well, thank you and thank congratulations. You. Thank you. That's great. Okay, that's good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Angelina's Market, design review for facade. Sign permit will be submitted at a later date. Okay, I was elected to present this Okay. <laughs> uh, for the owners, um, of course. Does that mean you have to go out there? So no, I'm gonna Can I just say first before you start, I, when I saw these plans, I like, Jamie knows, I was like ecstatic, over the moon, squealing with excitement. Squealing? I don't know, Yourself. something like that. Elated. Elated, I was just, there could not be a more perfect storefront. 
I mean, it, it looks okay. Great. Then I'm done. Mm. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has uh, every element. It, yeah. it is spot on. Yeah, it does. It, it follows does. every rule. Thank um, you. It is perfect. Brought it that way. Yeah, what we're doing, uh, Joe Lanassa and his mom Angela, um, they bought it and they're gonna open up an Italian market. But basically, um, tearing off that existing front that was there, you can see it there. It's, you know, that black and white actually looks probably better than the better. color. <laughs> um, right, right. But it was all, it was all wood furring. That's um, a lot of rough. They had some old historical photos that when, it was, when it was brick, and it really, it matches the, the new does. front elevation as far as having transoms. The concern was when we take all that stuff off, all the brick is going to be mm -hmm. bastardized. So mm -hmm. we're going to come back and overlay it with like a, an MDO or an ASIC, similar to like the front of the farmer's uh, market, farmer's market and not the art center, Olivino. Yeah. Um, put in new windows. Uh, we will utilize the transoms up above. Some of the windows will be slightly smaller than they were before just so they can in to construct it. Um, Color-wise, they're talking like a white or a light cream, something lighter colored. Uh, the window sash and the door sash is probably either going to be a dark bronze or a black. Um, they're going to see how their budget goes as far as the west elevation, whether they leave that brick exposed or they paint it. Um, they prefer to paint it, but they're going to see see how things go but once you paint it though you never can go back i i informed him of that <laughs> see, they don't know what he angela did. really he does like... not like the color of the brick yeah, i mean it's not a historic brick, brick. <laughs> yes it yeah. is that, that yeah. it's from yeah. the 1930s oh. mm -hmm. yeah. didn't look like um it. so there's a new <laughs> there's a new metal canopy over the front and then also on that west side there's that rear door that right now has that asphalt shingled yep canopy that'll be tore off <clears throat> um the sign i think may change on the west side they're they're actually talking about reusing the existing sign that uh ed's had there now it's kind of a bracket mounted okay. box sign um i don't think you can see it. no you can't it's kind of behind it's that on awning. the side it's, is it backlit yeah, I don't know if it's lit or not, but I didn't think it. I think it might have been at one time, but I don't know if it is. Um, but they're talking about utilizing that. But they're gonna they'll su <clears throat> submit for sign permits at a later date. So um, that's kind of what's going on there. Okay. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> they picked a good architect, I think. <laughs> um, lucky, I guess. Yeah, right. Somebody with knowledge. Any other comments on this? And Bridget, okay. are they utilizing NAT funds? No, they okay. said they didn't need to. Okay, I just didn't know because then I didn't know if all of them were tonight were mandatory, mandatory, but so this is still mandatory. Are they, theory. they're not using small TIF either? Nope. I know we couldn't talk them into any of the incentives. Oh, huh. yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. wow. they're, they're currently working inside. Um, Do you know, know like timetable wise when they're going to uh, start? They kept saying July. July. They hope, yeah, they hope. Be July. open or to be here? To be open. Okay. To be open. It'll just depend on how things move. Joe's got his own construction company and he's kind of doing this on the side. So right. help his mom. It's nice out. when it's in the family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, is there a motion for a design review? Yes, I'll make a motion. And I'll second that emotion. Okay, or we have a motion. Emotion. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> uh, motion and a second. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Excellent. We're all very excited about looking forward to that opening. Especially those of us that know Italian. Okay. Mr. Mraz. This is exciting. Oh, we're going to cut some holes in the old building. <laughs> well, it's had a lot of holes cut in it before. <laughs> um, yeah, it has. Um, we're actually, uh, Clark Glazer's guys are going to come down there and redo the whole front of the building, basically. And then um, if we have any color issues with any brick and, like, all the bad stuff and bad brick and holes and stuff, they're going to kind of clean all that up. Clark's crew is the one that's doing all the work for Andy down there. Um, but uh, the he, he says he... he uh, 
had done this to a number of buildings in St. Louis. And, he, and they kind of bring the bricks that don't match. It kind of brings it all together. Yeah, they can. Well, I was getting ready to explain that. They, they make like a, um, a, a dye that they can, they can stain the brick with, that they can mimic it to match other brick. And it holds up really well. So we're trying to make the facade look really good on the front of the building there. And then uh, basically everything we're focusing towards doing is on the front street side for the most part. Um, um, we have in this drawing here, there's something we kind of came up with a little change on. I think Ed spoke with some people about it here. Uh, possibly. So we, we're going to line we're the window. We're thinking about changing the front instead of doing the three windows like that, doing actually four windows. And it's just having them right below the mm -hmm. upper windows. I don't yeah, you guys can keep that, that copy. Yeah, copy that looks that. good. Which I think would look better. Um, and it'd be bigger windows and everything as well, too. So, so instead of three, there'd be four. Yeah. And they'd be the same size and directly below the ones above them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That would look. Um, yeah. uh, the uh, windows that we're planning on putting in are commercial, you know, aluminum frame windows. Um, oh, yeah. The doors are the same, commercial doors, all black. That's what we're going for. Yeah. Um, the garage door we're planning on changing and probably putting something that looks uh, kind of more like a somewhat of a carriage house looking door or something and you know probably black or darker color you know so just cleaning everything up making it look a lot better so and replacing the sidewalk outside um and then i know between that building and the building that andy's getting ready ready to put up next to us um there's actually going to be like an eight foot walkway going to the back of the building where we actually accommodate another 12 parking spots back there too Wow, so, very good. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, it's going to have three rental spaces on the inside of it. Um, we already potentially have some people going into them. We're trying to make sure it's somebody more or less that doesn't require a whole lot of traffic is what we're trying to, you know, obtain. So for, for clients there. But, uh, yeah, it's starting to come together pretty good you know the scuffer boxes and pipes we're going to put new black scuffer boxes and square downspout pipes coming out the building so it's going to be a lot different looking yes that sounds good any oh, so i'll go back to the picture would you the existing there you go Yeah, it's a poor <coughs> picture because it's on an angle, but if you were looking yeah. straight at it, it would be a direct window at sidewalk level. Directly below. Just yeah, but you know, so high off it, but right. it'd be the, the four on the east end. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, this is what it is now. Okay. Right. Any discussion? Contribution? Looks great. Oh. So are you moving that garage door to the west <coughs> a little bit? No, it's going to stay at the current location where it's at. It used to have a actual like old sliding door. That building, it's. I don't know if you've seen the history behind that building a little bit. It's been blown up, burnt down. It's. <laughs> I got pictures of it where the bricks are across the railroad tracks, you know, and stuff. I mean, oh, it's boy. like had about everything happen to that building over the years. It's been rebuilt several times, you know, and then people put in used it for different uses, you know, and would put doors in and whatever they need to accommodate you know what they're using it for so it's it's kind of interesting it's i know that building pretty well at this point but it's interesting just because of just the things that have, have happened throughout lives. there over many the lives years. yeah and the pictures i think the oldest picture we found with the historical um uh museum they had uh i think it was like 18 80 oh, something oh, yeah the, it was one of the, the oldest pictures of the, the building west, that they the west had, wall yeah. was brecton camp uh making wheels or flower some something there it's, it's one's in the bank yeah right. and that wall is still there and then the other three are done newer and <laughs> but <coughs> one, there's just a lot going one on of the it. issues was uh, if you look at those old pictures there were four of those scupper boxes and four down spots and now there's only three so in a heavy rain, we overflow like most of the old buildings in town anyway. So we're making those openings bigger. It, we, so we really can't because there's a drain and everything the way that garage door is set. But the other one, the other two will be straight and they'll be larger. 
much larger to take the water. So that'll be good. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't have far to go to the river. <laughs> you don't want to jump. Yeah. No, it don't. Yeah. Uh -uh. But never seen it up that high. So. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Oh, it came. Uh, it got, you know, you know, it went to the the uh, first railroad. Windowsill. No, it went to the it went the windows windowsills of the all kinds of waterworks. Yes. But that didn't you know, even, that just barely got to the railroad tracks or yeah. over the railroad yeah. tracks. And then there's, what, five feet from there? Yeah, to go up. Where you yeah. Are. Yeah. So it's, this uh, is good. It's the Germans <coughs> were smart to build on the hill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay, well, that is exciting. And I tell you, Front Street's unrecognizable, and you will be contributing oh, yeah. to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're so. uh, sure. We've We're been starting to look pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to do something. Used to a little peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of peer pressure <laughs> going on now. Drop me out so. of town if I don't do. Oh something. no, no, no. That, that's great. Okay, do we have a motion for a design oh, I review? Guess that's the whole idea of this one. I I'll make a motion based on that drawing. Yeah, yeah, based on yeah. your. Yeah. And can so what we have we'll do this? is we will. You can. Yeah. You we'll to, amend the, this list. The record. Yeah, we can amend this list to include that. As part of the record, so the this will be the requirements of the certificate, but just amended to accept that. This is a mandatory review, mandatory compliance. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Because it is utilizing what was the small. The other one. That's what I didn't understand. What the other what? I'm sorry. The other review. Uh, 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 we mandatory. Oh. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. So okay. this was reviewed a couple months ago with. The original drawings, and then right. they turned in their small TIF application, which makes it mandatory, mandatory. Um, and then we did get more information, so that's why we we made it go through another review. Yeah. And this will actually end up, sure. this will go to city council because they're utilizing the small TIF uh, in April. Right. Okay. Well, hopefully, city council won't have an issue because this is pretty exciting. Yeah. And uh, oh. great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. And uh, and you you can tell them we liked it. So that, yeah. yeah. We carry a lot of weight. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, don't go there. Okay. So did we have a motion? I motion based on the revised. drawing. On the drawings. revised drawing. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Rick. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. All right. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. You don't have to move if you don't want to. Brian's up, and he brought help support too. Steve, no. I'll come out there. Tony can come up too. Oh, actually, I wanted to pass this around too. This is a picture, just because I know Jamie really got a kick out of it. <laughs> the picture of the original oh, cool. building. It's the only picture of the front that we have, and it's a pretty cool picture, actually. It's really. Uh, cool. I just wonder who those people are. Yeah. No, it's like Jesse James up there. <laughs> <laughs> Probably here. <laughs> It's a pretty wild picture, actually. This, the one that's going around, is the full picture. That one. Um, I cropped it here, but the people in the wagon are just hilarious. They're, I mean. They're very serious. I, I, I don't think they're supposed to be, but they are. Um, but that's the building right in the center. And you can see that um, the original building, all three floors were exposed. And so it had a deck on the second floor. Obviously, we can't have a deck there now because uh, you wouldn't be able to get down into Dewey's. It would be very low. Uh, but we are wanting to put the balcony back on the third floor, uh, as well as reopen all of the windows to the exist to the original height. On the third floor, there are ten windows, um, two in the front, and then um, I think seven on the right side and one on the left. Um, and then, so those will be open. It's about a foot worth of bricks they'll be taking out, and they're all bricks that were that were added. So it'll go back to the original. Uh, they'll put the windows in and then they'll uh, put the sills back Interesting in. Interesting how it was squared off at one point and then they tapered it. Yeah, yeah. you know, we've talked a little bit top. about that and a couple different theories, but some of the people, uh, especially like at the Historical Society, thought that maybe it had some damage at one point and the easiest way to do it was just to even it out and mm -hmm. and make it look like this. So. Spring break night even. And now it has gargoyles, so. Yeah, that's right. Spring break. <laughs> That's good. Okay. And you can also see, and, and I, please excuse my poor drawing, but the, um, <laughs> you can see that there'll be a French door there behind the balcony. It's a uh, French door, both sides will open, and then above it, there's like a 15 inch transom that goes above the door because it's about a um, eight and a half foot high opening. So there'll be, a, I think it's a seven foot door, 
and then some filler and then a transom above that. Does that balcony, is it just stand on or is there seating? Is it how big? It's about eight feet and it goes to the original holes because you can see the original holes in and the brick. How deep? And yeah, how deep? Five feet deep. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's big. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were deciding between five and six feet and Andy, I think, kind of wanted to even go deeper, but... Um, it was adequate for seating and more than just going out and being able to see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it's... Um, we did discuss with him the electric lines, and he seems to think that it's not a problem. The electric is up higher, and they can work around it. So that's not necessarily something we'll have to wait for. Okay. Tornado took off. Well, and hopefully, the it will be. Second floor windows. You guys aren't changing those. Change. We're not. Okay. okay. We're not there. Um, well, the the two front ones were done a little differently than all the ones on the side, and you can see that the one all the way to the left was replaced with something entirely different. Yeah. Uh, but we're not doing the second floor. There are, um, there's already things going on in there. It would disrupt too much. And um, possibly in the future, if it's all vacant and we're doing major construction, we would do those as well. Is Drewy staying there? He is. Yeah. <laughs> he is. Okay. And do you know his hours that he's open? Well, right. he ever open? <laughs> I've been one that dusty pretzel for about three years now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have done a little investigation on that now, and we can inform you that it's plastic. Oh, oh. they're rubber. Mold. That's why they don't have mold. I'm so yeah. <laughs> super pressing. <laughs> you know, Joe made a good point too. The spires are still on church. So <coughs> I know. That means, you know, it was before the tornado. Right. So maybe okay. that's what happened to your, your building as well. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Earthquake, Remember. tornado. That's right. 1856. This building has seen a lot. Yes. Okay. Are there any other discussion? Oh, I think it was exciting I think it was stuff. Great. Absolutely. Okay. And then we do hope to do um, awnings. So we will have to come back for that because our uh, one tenant is going to do an awning on the right side, on the Oak Street side, um, with her logo on it. And we want to do a nice awning on the left side where the courtyard goes into the, that'll go up to the third floor. But we don't have that information ready. So we'll just come back for that. We'll try to do them both at one time. Are you turning in a small TIF application? If not, you should. You know what? We're still dragging our feet on that, but we would like to. We'll talk to Sal about that tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We've got a lot of things that are just um, coming together right now. I don't think you'll have to come back here. I think we'll just have to, if you don't change anything, we'll just attach their certificate to your new application, so that's okay. fine. Okay. Cool. They change, I, yeah. This was mandatory, mandatory anyway, because they are utilizing our low interest loan funds. So you can stick oh. it to them if you want to. <laughs> so the gold, uh, they're not really gargoyles. But. <laughs> Definitely well, not original. Uh, Cherubim, Seraphim. I'm not sure what they are. Are they staying or <laughs> where did <laughs> we had honestly uh, everybody asked that. We haven't really talked about that. I don't think we've they, talked to Tanya at all. Yeah. Oh, Tanya is our from, third partner, by the way. Yeah. From the majority standpoint, this this building, right. albeit those aren't necessarily historical, that is part of the living history of the building, just as the artist occupying it was. So the idea with the building would be, no matter what we do with it, to, to play on each uh, living history component that has survived there, which is why the upstairs is going to be the Rutger Inn. That was the original use of the building and property. It was a wood turner in the lower level, so we're operating a short-term rental in the upper level. The gargoyles to live as part of the gallery and maybe another gallery in there someday, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I just didn't know when they came about. Larry put them on. Was that Larry? Or Did he? Yeah. I assumed it was Larry. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also trying to put, mm -hmm. um, along with the Arts Council, put a piece of his sculpture back uh, just as part of the history in the courtyard. The pads are still there for them. Uh, and he had a big impact on the building. So we, we thought about putting a piece of sculpture back in the courtyard along with a plaque I stating. I know where you could get some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are, they are ready may have to that disseminate those and yes. put them out there. So that's mm. exciting. Okay. If there's no other comment, uh, do we have a motion for design reviewed for this facade? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to move. issue a review. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, update on applications for historic landmark designation. These went before the council. On the, yeah, this feels like old news. It's just because we didn't meet. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that it, it passed, uh, so now those structures are now um, hey. any future uh, work is mandatory, mandatory, and demolition has to be approved by council. 
Well, it has to be approved by this group and then count. Landmark piece. Oh, okay. So. Right. That is good. Okay. Uh, elections. Anyone is interested in an office, please speak up. If not, we will uh, accept motions. If someone wants to. I nominate Carolyn Remains as chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I second that. Oh, okay. Third that. <laughs> Do we need, I guess we need to vote on these individually. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. I will remain. <laughs> Anybody got a railroad whistle we could blow right there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a motion for a vice chair? I I nominate Steve. I second that. I got a second. I right there. Yes. Yes. Quick. Any discussion? I was nominate nope. somebody else. Okay. Well, um, Danielle, because she's not here. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's we have. I am here, so I don't get nominated. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what happened to me last time. That's right. No doubt. I think it did, Steve. It did. Yeah. That's exactly. Right. You don't Ten show up to job. <laughs> okay. All those in favor of Steve as vice chair, second chair, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Mm. you too. Okay. Oh, thanks. What a team. We get pay okay. raise again. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Uh, we're going to revisit the meeting schedule. Bridget has something to contribute to this, I think. Well, I just think that hopefully, we're, we're gonna, obviously tonight was a really amazing run. We saw more um, certificates of review than sometimes we've seen in a months, a, a year. Yeah. <laughs> so um, hopefully this will continue. Um, obviously, no one wants to come here for for not having a good reason just to have a meeting to have a meeting um so i think what um what my plan is or my hope is is that um i feel like you will have something to review just right because i know of what's coming down the pipe for next month so i would like to have a meeting next month and then i will also have a plan for um you know what we can talk about or not talk about and we if we don't have a, a review pending for the month so, but I, I think you will have a review for next month anyway, so. I would agree with that. I would hate to see us not meeting on a regular basis, especially to make things easier for people who are doing projects. I would almost rather if we're going to skip or if we don't see anything coming up, do it like we've done in the past where we just say, we have nothing on the agenda for next month. We don't have any educational things. Let's skip and go to the next month rather than having to throw in supplemental meetings. Happen in the winter a lot. I would imagine. Right. Yeah. So, so we would decide on a month by month basis, and we would rely heavily on Jamie, who would know <laughs> more than we would if there was something in the loop that we needed to address. Yep. So we will meet next month. Then, is there any discussion against? Um, it sounds like we'll have something to do, and that's what we're here for. So. We were we were going to meet anyways, weren't we? Yeah. But next month we were supposed to meet anyway. Um, that would, if we'd done every quarter, so. Uh, oh, it just said May. Right. Yeah. So. so. Out of the four dates that they had chosen, May was the next one. So May was the best. April. So it'll be April 15th. Right. Okay, well, let's, let's plan on next month, and we'll uh, kind of do it on a case-by-case -case basis, and if there's nothing specific to review and no major changes in our old business, um, and anything uh, at the same time, if something comes up and is pressing, we will rely on email. A lot of times you don't have a lot of time. They don't even waiting till the third. You know, though, I know I, I sometimes feel like we're rushed. And then sometimes in the emails, it's like it's herd mentality too. like one person. And then we're kind of all waiting for Steve to talk a lot. too. Yes. I'll hold yes. back. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, I mean, even if we could, you know. People should know enough of their schedule. We don't want to be in their way, sure. but we also have an opinion that needs to be heard. So that is true. So okay, well, we'll we'll plan on next month, yeah. and um, which would be the I'm not sure what it Jamie was. said 15th. the 15th, 15th. April 15th. Excellent. Oh, the Ides mm -hmm. of April, so to speak. Okay, so that revisited. Before we get out of new business, I had two things. Um, which I'd rather under new business than really other business, though I technically it could be. Um, at the uh, planning and zoning meeting, we had a discussion about uh, a Missouri uh, law that was passed, House Bill 1991, which was Uniform Small Wireless Facility Deployment Act. It's basically small cell towers. 
uh, that can be the size of a two liter can, tall boy, if you will. Um, <laughs> and uh, they can be placed on uh, um, uh, existing utility poles. And so we, this came up two years ago. There's a company, Mobility, um, that came in and wanted to place them uh, three different places downtown um, on existing on existing Ameren poles. Um, and then they also wanted to put a new tower across from VFW in the right of way. Um, our zoning code requires if you're going to put a cell tower up, you have to get a special use permit. Since then, uh, all of these companies like Mobility have lobbied to the state. Um, Sorry, Carolyn, I'm just kind of running with no, this. No, go with it. <laughs> uh, have lobbied to the state to, um, they went to the Public Utility Commission, and now these small cell wireless facilities are considered a public utility and can go in right away by right. They are no longer just, they're, they're treated just like internet, uh, TV cable, and the railroad. I mean, all those things can basically go in right away. They cannot be held back to uh, zoning codes. They can't get a special use permit. Uh, they can't get any special designation. There are two caveats. One, if it's in a historic district, and two, if it was in a single family residential area, uh, then the city can pass ordinances or have special regulations for that. Um, what I would suspect would be happening is that they go on existing Ameren poles, and we wouldn't, wouldn't really have to worry about it because honestly, they are like, let me pull one up. I did this at PNZ. Um, they're going to be placed on existing poles. They're just canisters. What I suspect we would be reviewing, if anything, would if, if they can't find a location with an existing Ameren pole, especially as we continue to bear utilities, uh, they may be coming and asking for um, a new pole, which we can't say no to, but if it's an historic district, we can require a review. This is a question outside of design review. Is this for private? Is this is this like a correct private use, not public use kind of cell phone or cellular tower? Correct. So like um, Tower Co., which normally comes in and builds all these 120, 200 foot towers, builds them and then leases out to Sprint, AT and T, Verizon. Okay. This would be the same where a company like Mobility would come and put canisters up and then lease them to private companies. Okay. It's basically meant to fill dead spots, which could gotcha. widely benefit our downtown. I think sure. yeah. this could actually be great because we, I mean, our most bustling and vibrant area has terrible cell reception and that's not good. <laughs> um, but we just have to be careful. That's why we actually, uh, the city put a moratorium on these um, and they were uh, on not doing any new ones. Um, and the, the state actually did specifically say cities can no longer put moratoriums on these. You have to allow them. So, could but we, you can see they were placed on poles, existing poles tech, uh, usually. So I think typically if these were going on an existing pole. Um, can you click on it, make it bigger? <clears throat> That's a lot bigger than the beer bottles I. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> so, you're right, that is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever this was brought up, uh, eight, uh, Wash PC has said that they, they've seen them just like canister size as well. So can you allow, can you still require that they be disguised in some way or can you not even require that? You can. Um, can you put a size parameter on it? So you can say it has it's own, this size. The state already has its own size parameter and it's pretty big. Um, it was in that pretty ordinance I, I gave. Um, it's, yeah, they have a size parameter for what goes up is in that, the air. So that, that right photo, is that what I'm seeing? That. No, I'm sorry, go back to the first one, there. That's what, where is it at? That thing right there? Yep. That's pretty big. That is kind of yeah, big. Yeah, I mean, like, it, you know, it can get pretty big. Um, it, the state did put parameters on, on how large they can get. Um, so if some, has someone applied to put these in us in here yet? No. No. This is just preemptive. Mobility did though a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, right. right, well what happened yeah. was, that was two years ago and we put a moratorium and then in the process of that moratorium where we were going to pass an ordinance on what they had to do, one, the state started reviewing it because so our city attorney kind of said, we're gonna hold off on passing anything. We waste time if the state yeah. then approves it and changes our rules. Two, mobility um, kind of ran with that idea that they were a public utility and they placed a brand new 100 foot tower in a single family residential neighborhood in Springfield and got sued. And so when I called Mobility and said, 
because we actually had an offer form on our uh, on our police station if they wanted to put one there and they could replace our 911 equipment so we kind of get the best of both worlds because uh, they wanted one in this area they said they were no longer building new ones they were just adding canisters to existing poles because they had been sued <laughs> so so but, but you, so go ahead, go ahead. But you can, but you can require. You could pass a city ordinance requiring that they be disguised in some fashion. I in historic and residential districts only. And only, as I understand it, Piantic will be able to interpret it better as I could. But he didn't correct me yeah. at PMZ. Right. But I believe it's just in historic and um, residential districts, and it's pretty vague. It said you can the municipality can have the zoning administrator determine <laughs> what is considered disguised which is pretty <laughs> subjective. Right. So. Mm -hmm. It's funny, we didn't hear anything from the state, though, because, you know, SHPO is, I don't know, I haven't gotten anything from them in a long time. I don't know if Jamie's been getting anything from them, but, you know, you'd think- They're they having internal issues. issues. They're having issues, yeah. from what yeah. I understand. Yeah. Right. So is PNZ moving forward on anything, or what are you suggesting, Sal? Uh, well, PNZ, I'm not. We don't have to do anything here. <laughs> um, PNZ received the ordinance from Piantech and has a month to mark it up. Um, and I have a copy if anybody wants to look at it. I can email. Oh, so you already drafted. We have an one. ordinance. Yeah. Well, Piantech okay. did. Actually, MML did. This is this will be the ordinance every city adopts. So. <laughs> But um, I felt I suspect it will be tweaked a little bit because our each department's getting a chance to look at it that's relevant. So building the building department's going to look at it on what because there are uh, a list a list of uh, submittals they have to put in with it uh, that the building department can look at. Um, I'll have to check with Piantech. I don't know if we are going to have to pass our own ordinance for historic preservation or if it kind of is covered in there because it does talk about. It is mentioned. It is permit mentioned. in historic districts, but it was so. very vague. So I just it thought is all we, very we vague. needed to know that that was out there. If somebody comes and tries to slap canisters on our new light right. bulb, well, I would bet oh. it's probably <laughs> pretty vague on purpose because since it is now a public utility, if you get too specific, you're well, open yourself up to lawsuits. You're, you're trouble. Sure. Yeah. Do you know what the like the spacing of these would be? I mean, would it just be? Mm. Um, yeah, there probably wouldn't be a whole bunch in right. no, area. I think. It's not. It's not very far. I want to say, like four square square blocks. These things can cover. It depends on the topography and yeah, the buildings. It will be though. Right. The co to use it. Yeah. How many co-locates you have on there? And I'm thinking now. I'm, I'm I'm thinking of the size and the distance. I'm probably getting confused with our Wash PC is actually putting up the ones for our downtown Wi-Fi. And that probably allows smaller equipment than what this. So that canister I was That's describing. That's his tall boy. Yeah, I was probably yeah. thinking that I was getting those mixed up. Our Wi-Fi, our free Wi-Fi we're putting up downtown. Those are the smaller canisters yes. that we can put on yes. any. Okay. Where are those being located? Uh, we're going to put the main one on the H Tower uh, downtown that we just took over from Union Pacific, right by the, the train depot. Train depot. Cool. And then we are going to continue to move out as we find dead spots. I would think most people would be goals to get up to Fifth Street happy. with free Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I think most people would be happy just looking at a few of these and actually having cell service downtown. Cell so, service. Yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. So what Wash PC is putting up does it's not the same. That's just for Wi-Fi, but this would be for actual service mm -hmm. data. So, right. Good. What's your your I'm goal on the Wi-Fi downtown? Wi-Fi. The date, like <laughs> hoping it's right. operational <laughs> by. I don't know. I, I yes. have no clue. Yeah, we are. We are. Darren just walked in. When are we gonna have free Wi-Fi downtown? Tomorrow. This year? We had, yeah. I mean, we acquired the H Tower. It's, I, we call it the H Tower down there on Front Street, and so they had to order some equipment for that. So that's good. Here you go. Fifty to five hundred meters, so it's not very wide. <clears throat> Depends on the topography. Mm. So these could be placed, you know, pretty intermittently wow. downtown. Wow. Yeah. Well, I just felt, I heard that in planning and zoning and thought we need to know that that's going on. The, uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, also at planning and zoning, they, you have a spy there. Um, the uh, uh, post clinic was rezoned to R3. And Not yet. What? Well, I mean, it goes it to council works. tonight. It goes to the council tonight. Right. But the idea was, and of course I asked, because uh, there was a mention that it could have up to four units, which would be eight parking places. 
and even if they tore it down, and so that immediately raised a flag, and I said, by the way, and there was a realtor was here, and he said, no, the people were very intrigued by the building. They did not have any any desire. Post clinic? It's on Cedar. It was the, the old. The yellow. The old, old title company. 1930s. Building? Yes, that's been for sale for a while. Yes. Okay. Lampke's um, law office okay. was the most recent, but post clinic is, I think, still over the door. But um, I was very happy to hear that they are enamored of the building and they want to live in the lower level. They will be before us because they have a handicapped child and they need a ramp and I, to the external. And I thought that was probably not going to be an issue if they keep the building. And, uh, but, and then they would uh, rent out the upstairs. So they weren't looking at more than two units at this time, but they do have the possibility of going to four. That's how much room they have for parking. But I thought that was really good news. I mean, we didn't even have to chain ourselves to the door or anything. <laughs> so this was this was good. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at me like that's no, 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 no. I've got that. the chains are in the trunk. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is good. I don't want to know. Just got to be ready. That's right. Okay, old business. We'll do this real quickly because I don't think there's much of any old business. International his district. I don't continues think to move forward. Right. Um, conferences. Um, Bridget and I are going to the and Brian and Brian and Tony I hope going to the um, National Main Street meeting in Seattle next week this Lucky. weekend this weekend <laughs> it snuck up on me uh, <laughs> so it should be excellent so we'll be able to report back on all the exciting things we'll learn um, well they have changed the May um, CLG train to a camp training uh, which oh, I've heard good cool. things about. And so yeah. I don't have the dates on it yet, but she called and asked if they could use us as an example of a success story. So I would hope that some of us that would be great. make it to that if they're going to be utilizing us. So. Yeah, I, I wondered. I noticed we it's hadn't in, heard anything. It's in Jeff City, so once I get the date, I'll share that, and hopefully we can get a little I have. Uh, I've been to a camp training before. It was really good. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. you saying that. So Excellent. Uh, that also would count as one of your uh, education. Uh, curb appeal and creating new history. I don't think we have anything nope. that works for that. Uh, budget report, nothing has changed. We made the first payment to landmarks for 4675 um, There's 14025 still set aside for landmarks, so that leaves 11750 in budget. Excellent. I promise not to use all of it because I, I did receive notification that I did get the um, um, scholarship oh, you for them, but until I get the money, I'm holding off. You're fine. Because I don't trust them. But if I get that, they will reimburse me for my registration, so that won't come, come from you all. Uh, the plaques, we're not doing much this year. Calvin Theater, I heard the tarp blew off. It was blowing around quite a bit. Yeah, it's, it's, we should paint a flag on that. Did, uh... John called him. John Mildes called him, and he said he was getting taken care of. Okay, good, You can find a new good. tarp. Is that reason enough to do an inspection? He didn't say what he was doing. Well, I understand I don't know. that there we was, can do an inspection, but not on the interior. A citizen was uh. going to file a report. Did a concerned citizen do that? Not yet. Well, you tell her she needs to do that. Okay. See, it runs in the family, Jamie. Um, hey, hold on. Oh, back to education and yes. conferences. See that there's a preservation yes. academy. This is so exciting. Uh, Downtown Washington is doing a preservation academy with our design committee, and uh, this is an opportunity. For anyone in this group that needs, you know, you need, you're supposed to do some sort of education during the year, and I would think all of this would be legal. Yes. It has to be approved by the state, but I don't think there'll be any problems. We're doing three Saturdays, and it's from 8 until noon, and the first one is the 30th, and it's historic window preservation and appropriate historic landscaping. We have experts coming in and putting on these programs. Uh, April 6th is historic brick preservation and painting historic surfaces and then may 4th investing in historic properties and financial incentives for historic properties bridget and sal will be our experts and um we're um requesting a 25 dollars registration fee for the for the day and if you're there for the two programs at the end of the program you will receive 25 dollars in downtown gift certificates Oh, that's so cool. you're re you're getting your money back, but you have to spend it downtown. <laughs> also, we'll provide breakfast and lunch. So you're paid to you we're kind of paying you to come. I will be there in May. Actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, as it, I it would really be very helpful for us. Um, so the reason that we're able to put this on is part of a grant 
Um, and so we do have a minimum amount of warm, um, knowledgeable people, you need bodies there. So, um, and these experts have taken time out of their schedule to plan this. So um, it would be really wonderful if you could attend at least one, if not all three. Right. And if you attend all three, then you get a, certifi a certification that you are sanctified and certified as a historic <laughs> preservation educated person. Yes. Right. Can I frame it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll work you with that. Uh, and you also get a bargain if you sign up for all three. I got one more thing, another business. I want Sally to explain why the vape shop sign wasn't brought forward. Thank you. Yes. yes. Oh, it's an existing frame. So whenever you put in a sign into an existing frame, it does not require a permit. Wow. I noticed that the other week. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. also on the map, they are just outside of the design review. Oh. oh are they? I just got to assume they were. Oh, because it's cedar. And they're closer to the Yeah, point. I just assumed since it was right by Tilted Scale. Yeah. I thought, oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't get a sign permit anyway, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they didn't need one. Because if you were replacing it, you don't need one. So. Yeah. Well, so it is a vape shop that's going in there? Mm -hmm. it's oh, yeah. oh, it's in there. Yeah, it's, open. Open. it's open. It's in there. All right. I miss, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can vape at your... Okay, is there any other business? <laughs> next okay. meeting is Our April 15th. Will be April 15th. I motion we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Oh, you're slow, Andrew. Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. opposed? Motion adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So you guys, it's just going to be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh.